So here I am at the Game Developers Conference checking out a couple of the indie games they have going on here. This is Light Fingers for Nintendo Switch. <laughs> it is an action puzzle game. Okay, yellow. Where, oh, you're yellow. I am yellow. Cool. Yeah. You can, you can win this, <laughs> and I will probably reset it. Sort of like Mario Party. You know what? Maybe, maybe I just, I'll just reset it now. A bit of a <laughs> point and click <laughs> platforming <laughs> goodness <laughs> thrown in there. I know, right? Because you took the controller from the guy who was totally yeah. I know, he was going to be very important. But uh, it's been. Uh, the games have taken a little longer. Without it. Uh, uh, especially when people use the focus constantly. So it is. Uh, it's been harder to get to a play session. How long has uh, this been in development? Uh, over two years. Over two years, wow. Uh, who's Red? I think you are. So, I'm Red. Yes. So, Hello, Hello. Confirm. Yeah. Actually, we're just happy to be here. big players in Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm good this, is, this feels so chaotic. <laughs> um, it's part of the fun. It's you. Uh, you just have to confirm. Got you. Hello, maybe you can take this one. Go on. Uh, so I feel really strongly about this. Yeah. I'm not sure how far it is. So, uh, what's your history in the gaming industry, if you don't mind my asking? Oh, I mean, I've always been around games on some level. In fact, even my, my uh, background is I went to art school in Vancouver, and cool. my final piece was actually a game back in 99. And I, I, I always forget this. I've always been around games. I love playing them, and I made them. I never really thought of myself as being part of the industry. But when we started uh, our co-working space and I got introduced to a big gaming community in Toronto, uh, I realized they were exactly the kind of people I wanted to be working with and helping out and supporting. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay. I've actually got. But when someone else doing something yeah, like that around the world, somewhere else. Probably, but I don't know them. I mean, I know there's like there's good academic programs, there's like good like artist collectives, like there's good stuff. But in terms of the focus and the way we do it, I haven't met it yet. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just I haven't really met it yet. And uh, we like we provide a lot of materials for communities though, like Code of Products, uh, Jam Guides, like uh, like anything that we we do, uh, uh, we provide. In, open source and like even GDC used our code of conduct as the basis of their code of conduct. Oh really? Yeah, because we have it on GitHub and they could work it and they do that. Gonna check it out. Yeah. You know, you mentioned that uh maybe it wasn't you, it might have been uh the gentleman over there mentioned that Mario Party was a bit of an inspiration for this game. Were there any other inspirations? Um I think like that was the big one, but I, I think like sure. unlike a lot of games like we really worked on the thematics to like kind of like push the mechanics of the game. Yeah. So like once like uh, Sir Cube's original idea for this game came from like a jam game where he had a really like specific kind of like look at like it was like uh, almost Greek and stuff and it was like oh, and I thought the game was cool. Yeah. 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 I thought the game was cool but I uh, I thought the setting was boring. You know, so I said like what, are, what can we do about this? What can we and so we started saying, Well thieves, they they're they're unveiling they're unveiling tiles, they're going into these little dollhouses and like you know, like let's let's like they're it's they're moving dragon's feel to it. Yeah. There's a little bit of fantasy. Alice in, Alice in Wonderland, yeah. if that makes yeah. any sense. I like to think about things like, yeah, like Robert Asprin's stuff, like uh, Thieves' World and like um, like the Myth series, you know, those Mything Link and Myth Adventures, I don't know if you know these books. Uh, there's like, there's a sort of humor and it's like lighthearted, it's but like, you know, they're thieves still, yeah. you know. Um, a little bit of a mix between sort of whimsicalness and like seriousness. Yeah, that's right, right, where it's like these guys clearly are all out on night in the real world stealing money and then wagering their money on this board game, right? Yeah. And the board game is like totally fake, but the money is real. And they already did steal things, you know, so it's like kind of funny, like, uh, you know, kind of funny, like, cycle, circle. Yeah. So, uh, this will be on Nintendo eShop. Is it by Springish or later than that? Or? Uh, I was talking to Nintendo, uh, today we're just deciding on, or this week and we're deciding on what we're launching it, but we're working very closely with them. Sounds good. Well, I definitely want to pick, pick this game up. I Yeah, thank really you so much. Game. Yeah, I Thanks so much. Game. And, uh, I was recording it, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Did you get stickers and stuff? I need to grab a sticker. This is a game I played yesterday called Juicy Realm. Sort of an action shoot 'em up top-down game. Yeah, Deer Bomb. Sort of reminds me a little bit of Bomberman. I hate this. This is 
the perfect game for me. It's where a bunch of mushrooms and vegetables and stuff have taken over the world and you have to fight against giant watermelons and stuff. <laughs> that's, that's almost when I was there. What school did you go to? In Pickles. Yeah. Oh, you just did it. Here we have a game called Malaka. Not a really fun indie game I got the chance to play. This game is actually available to play on all home consoles. Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch. It's like a giant rock frog enemy. To swing your spear at this guy. I'm playing a game called Million Onion Hotel. It's a touch game of sorts. I'm playing it on a on a touchpad as you can see. Basically what you do is you get points by clicking on all these onions. <laughs> right now I am fighting a boss and not doing so well as you can see. Another really cool indie game, Shape of the World. I had the chance to play this for about five to ten minutes, and uh, it's like another gem that I want to pick up when it comes out. It's really neat how you can manipulate everything, and it sort of uh, sort of feels like you're playing as the wind almost. Uh, can like. Your speed changes depending on how you manipulate all of the objects like the trees around you. But just just try to keep up. So yeah, you guys are racing first. Yeah, yeah. Got my pin there. Just got one for. Uh, you have a dash on your right button. It's a dash. That's a smarter. For light fingers. Getting a lot of. A lot of swag, as they call it here. Which I'm, I'm cool with. Mm. Beautiful looking game. That shape of the world. This is Guacamole 2. Uh, sort of a Metroidvania game where you play as uh, wrestlers who can also turn into chickens. got a chance to play this for a couple minutes. It was pretty cool. <laughs> Reminds me a lot of Raymond Legends.